Hi, I'm Lindsay, and uh, my hobby is obsessing over why people choose to follow or rally against scientific consensus. So, before you invite me to all your parties, let's get into it. <laughs> what is scientific consensus? Well, it's the collective agreement of a community of scientists in a particular field. And this isn't easy, so it's a pretty big deal when it happens. But historically speaking, groups of white men in rooms don't always make the best decisions, so <laughs> has scientific consensus always been right? Hell no. We thought the Earth was the center of the universe. We thought light needed a substance to travel through. We thought disease was spread through smelly air. But consensus isn't really about people agreeing or a percentage of people voting. It's really about the data or the evidence. And while it might seem like an endpoint, it's really the starting point, or square one on snakes and ladders. We all agree on square one, and then we go off to find new knowledge about the universe. Look at evolution. Some people are still arguing about it, but if we hadn't agreed that evolution was the consensus, or square one, then we likely wouldn't have uh, achieved our understanding of genetics. Or we could talk about climate change. You probably saw the headlines stating that 97% of scientists agree that the climate is warming and humans are contributing to it. But the emphasis isn't on the scientists, as in the humans, it's about the data. And so 97% of scientists agree because the data is so overwhelming. Now imagine if I asked all of you to agree on where we should eat dinner tonight, but multiply that times thousands of skeptical scientists shuffling around conferences and grumbling as they peer review each other's work, scrutinizing, questioning, critiquing. And while it's all sort of a miserable experience to be on the receiving end, the underlying reason for it all is that it makes us scrutinize and question our own work so that what we're collecting, analyzing, all stands up to the tests and brings us closer to truths about the universe. All this to say that it is no small task to get a group of scientists to agree. So when we see consensus statements, they're profoundly important. <laughs> that means that a group of scientists got together, looked at a bunch of data, and agreed that we're causing warmer climate. So, I'm about to say some really dirty words, and you are not going to like this part. If we respect scientific consensus as it relates to climate change, then we have to think about what that means for scientific consensus around things like GMOs and vaccines. But, before you tune me out for saying those naughty words, bear with me. I spend a lot of my time listening to people who oppose GMOs and vaccines. And more often than not, they say they are not anti-science, they just don't believe what they're being told. And herein lies the root of the problem. We all form beliefs as part of our identities, and we have a difficult time navigating information that doesn't fit with those beliefs. It doesn't make us stupid or bad people, most of the time. It's just hard to break the cycle of confirmation bias, where we continually seek information that supports what we already believe. It's natural, and we all do it. So when we see a consensus statement from the National Academies that says GM crops are safe, we interpret that statement through a lens of our pre-existing cultural beliefs. And this is where scientific consensus gets very tricky, when it gets used to inform policy. And if you don't believe me that this is important, just look at the past presidential election. Russian trolls used polarizing topics like climate change, GMOs, and vaccines to stir discord in our communities. Regardless of which political ideology you follow, we should all be concerned about that level of manipulation. Our inability to follow scientific consensus is an Achilles heel. All right, so this is a huge dump and it's all uncomfortable. I know you're ready for me to shut up. And the good news for you is I only have a minute left. So my only ask is that we understand that while our beliefs do not influence scientific consensus, they do influence how we vote, how policies are implemented, and how entire ecosystems and populations are impacted. So, scientific consensus says, we're leading to a warmer climate, GM crops are safe, vaccines and safer, are safe and effective, and you can still ask tough questions about long-term ecological impacts, improving safety, uh, questionable business practices. But we all have to work together. So when you find yourself with scientific information that doesn't fit with your beliefs, Lean into that discomfort just a little. 
Ask yourself what's really bothering you. Follow the data. In the end, we have to ask scientists to be better communicators, and we can all be better listeners. Thank you.